Today is 420, and we've got a really nice release of Rust, 1.69. As always, if you haven't updated recently, you can use Rust up update to update to Rust 1.69. Rust 1.69 isn't a batch of major features, so we're looking at a bunch of small fixes this month. For me, the biggest feature is Cargo Fix, so let's go take a look at what that is and what versions of it you can actually run. So I've got a freshly Cargo nude repo here. If I do git status sb, you can see that I have uncommitted files, which are Cargo Toml, source, and git ignore. If I try to run Cargo Fix now, what we get is the working directory of this package has uncommitted changes and cargo fix can actually, you know, cause potentially destructive changes because that's what it is. It takes code that would have otherwise produced a warning and then changes that code destructively, which hopefully you're using Git because that won't be an issue for you if you are. So you can run cargo fix if you want to on unstaged changes. I would suggest not doing that and actually doing a git commit and then running cargo fix. So I'm going to run a cargo build so that we get our lock file here. Then I'll git add dot to add everything and add our first commit. Now we can run cargo fix and cargo fix will actually run. Of course, it hasn't actually done anything as we can do if we check git status again. So if we open our actual application, I'm going to replace this code with code that I've already written. So at the top, we've got use standard hash hash, which we aren't using anywhere in our program. And in our main function, we've got let mute i equals zero. And then we've got a cargo clippy warning that would show up here, which we can take a look at if we were on cargo build. So we've got the unused import standard hash hash that is coming from cargo. And we've also got a second warning called value assigned to i is never read. That's not actually going to matter to us. If we run cargo clippy, then we do get also the same warnings that we just saw, but we also get an additional warning that manual implementation of an assign operation, which means that we're doing i equals i plus one here, and we could be doing i plus equals one which is what Clippy prefers. So I'll use git add dash u to add all the changes. I'll commit those changes. And now I can run cargo fix. And when I run cargo fix, you'll see it automatically removed the use that we weren't using. So if we do a git diff here, right at the bottom, then we see that in source main, it removed the use standard hash hash because we aren't using standard hash hash. So let's say we're happy with that. I'll commit. So now we have a clean branch. We've got our standard hash hash removed. And now we can go to the other fix, cargo clippy dash dash fix. And dash dash fix will take care of this i plus one situation. So now instead of i equals i plus one, we've got i plus equals one, which we can see if we do the diff. Theoretically, cargo compiler errors are also fixable, but I don't believe that the Rust project has moved forward with actually being able to automatically fix any of those compiler errors, even though some of them can be and are very fixable. That said, look to see this feature expanding in the future. So if you use build scripts, the build scripts don't include debug information anymore, and that's to improve compile times of those build scripts, which is actually kind of nice. There are a couple of profile-based settings to enable or disable the debug information itself. So if you really want that back to debug something, you can enable it. If we go back to our fix project that we had before, I'll create a build.rs here. It needs a function main. And maybe we'll just panic here when we build. So this is the error that we get when we do cargo build without the debug information. Thread main panic dot here, build.rs25, process didn't exit successfully, yada yada. If we include that debug information, this looks very much the same. So what actually changed here? Well, if we look at the back traces, so we panicked in our build script, right? So panic here. And I've for this run, we have actually have these enabled. So if we look at the back trace, we can see that there are function names and the locations in files at which those functions are called. That's the debug information that we're talking about here. If we use Rust equals backtrace one, and we use the new default of not having debug information, then we don't actually get those file locations and function names for certain amounts of our actual build script. So you can see here, we've got build script build main, which is you know our main function here. And it doesn't have the location at which it panicked or the location that we need to care about. Whereas when we have the debug information turned on, we do have that location that we actually can go look at. So that's what we're looking at. I think the new default is actually pretty good. And you can always turn this on profile based however you want to do it. You could have a special debug profile for your build scripts. And I'm happy to get a little bit more speed in my compilations. There's a couple of stabilized APIs mostly concerning FFI with C. So if that's something 
that you're interested in. We've got C string from bytes until null and core FFI from bytes until null error. The constification continues with a bunch of IP address related or socket address related APIs being constable now. And of course, there's a bunch of people that work on these. There's a bunch of other changes that have gone in. I think there's something like 3000 commits that have gone into this release. So even though some things make it into the release notes and th some things don't, there are a lot of changes that always go in to every release. So thank you to all the contributors and I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day.